Fast fashion is the mass production of clothing that uses low quality materials at a very low cost and at the expense of our environment. This energy consuming practice accounts for 10% of all carbon emissions in the world. I'm going to go through that in a minute. It's just a staggering amount. Uh, my next guest is a designer who's committed to reducing this footprint. Spencer Phipps is the founder of Phipps, a menswear brand that's rooted in responsible fashion. Spencer, thanks for joining me today. Look, you know, when, when uh, Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez came out with a new Green Deal and there was kind of, you know, some tug of war over, you know, the impact of cows uh, in our climate equation, I had known just enough to say, but what about blue jeans? And so, you know, when you kind of, you know, look at the amount of water, you look at the natural resource that we're tied up in some of this stuff. I'm not an expert like you, but I just knew that I was ignorant of the incredible economic consequences uh, of what we wear. Can you share with our audience some of those points, those, the, 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 the points in that discussion, and then tell us what you're trying to reverse? Yeah, well, I mean, one of the complications of trying to work responsibly in garment production is kind of how, how vast that is. You know, you have your raw materials, you have your trims. If you look, for example, at a pair of jeans, you have the fabric, which is, yeah, Organic cotton, indigo is a very complicated uh, textile uh, dyeing stuff, you know, that, that has a lot of impact on the environment. There's also the threads. You're talking about buttons, maybe zippers, packaging, shipping. You know, there's all the CO2 carbon footprint that's involved in that. And then also the customer use. If, if it's a short term, you know, someone's going to wear it twice and throw it away. What do they do afterwards? Uh, you know, what's the end of life of that garment? How does it, you know, what does it end in a landfill? Do you recycle it? Can you reuse it? Uh, it's it's kind of mind-boggling once you start, and and some and that, some part you know, of it and some part of it, Spencer, is a massive amount of water. I don't know what is. the water goes to, but there's a water in a lot of it. Maybe in other, you know, there's there, there, yeah. you know related I mean, dying things, things you just said. Cotton. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. So um, so tell us about about how you've been approaching responsibility, environmental responsibility, sustainability at the core of how you thought about. Uh, fashion and and what we what we wear in our everyday lives, which I probably need to improve. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, I think for for me starting the brand, you know, I started it three years ago, so that was in the, you know that's in the middle of a climate crisis, in the sense that it would be negligent and ignorant of myself to think that I could start a brand without thinking hmm. on a global scale of what responsibility we can do. You know, I think. That was just like the, the least I could do. Um, if we can do better than that, that's even, you know, that's even better. So we just always try and do the absolute best that we can, you know, with the means that we have at the time. And it's, it's, it's sort of an open learning process. We've tried things that, you know, at one point you think are, are correct. And it comes out later that actually, yeah, like you're saying, cotton, you think organic cotton is the solution. It's actually maybe more complicated than you think because it's, yeah, the water usage, you have a certain, you know, biodegradable packaging that you're using that eventually actually realize maybe leaves a trace behind. So it's not as good. Um, you know, so it's always it's just about constantly improving your practices and, and always questioning that it's never, you know, just saying, OK, we did it. You know, we finished being responsible. The, you know, it's, it's kind of a never ending quest. What are some of the sustainable practices that you've woven into what you're producing? Um, well, there's definitely, you know, our raw materials are either organics or uh, we use a lot of recycled, upcycled. Uh, we use a lot of dead stock things. We even sell vintage, you know, so pre-existing garments that we just kind of curate uh, and integrate into the collections. Our, our packaging is biodegradable. Our, our labels are recycled. Our hang tags are made from recycled paper. We try and localize also our production as much as possible. So the fabrics coming from Portugal, they stay in Portugal with a Portuguese factory. You know, so we're not shipping things from, you know, one continent to another and back again. Uh, we also like just on a more sort of ethical level with the garments are, you know, themselves, we try and make things that will last a long time. You know, we want to make the hoodie hmm. that you're going to wear for years, you know, the T-shirts and fleeces. And even, you know, we started making suits that were, you know, very artisanally made that are the sort of thing that you can just wear for years, you know, because I think there's a certain amount of longevity that should be built into something, especially if you're going to pay a price for it. You know, you want to keep that forever. Do you see it as a trend in your industry that's happening or is this still basically at boutique level? I interviewed 
um, the president, the co-founder of Allbirds a couple of years ago. Um, I didn't own a pair of Allbirds. I, I, own, I own one now. I really like them. But, you know, a lot of our discussion also had to do with durability, with recyclable materials. He told me about the long painful process they went through on their shoelaces and they only wanted to make them of recyclable materials. And so it just reminded me a little bit of our discussion. And so you're the second uh, uh, fashion lead I've interviewed in this in this space. I don't even know if you like all birds. Maybe you, maybe you no, don't I mean, think I, they're... Yeah, what they do is great. I think, you know... Uh, yeah. But do you I think, think more and more that's, of the that's... industry is going your direction? I think so. I think, you know, what's happening also is it's the conversation that's being had in the industry. Uh, in the sense that like a lot of companies are thinking about it or talking about it, whether or not they're acting on it is a different question. But there are a group of us that have done it and, you know, in a business sense, have made money from it and have have been able to capitalize on that so that people that are hesitating are seeing that, you know, actually there's value. Customers like this. They want that. They, you know, are looking for that actively. So if we can give them a product that has a traceable supply chain and is good quality and is going to last them and is, you know, uh, you know, garnering a sort of responsible community, I think there is definitely going to be a bigger, bigger movement. Yeah, I'm looking, my, my team gave me a picture of Phipps SS21 Spirit of Freedom Sustainable Collection. It's not in color, unfortunately, because I think it would be very colorful. But I can tell that, you know, some of the vintage elements. But, you know, I know folks may want to go look at this and hear this. But, you know, just tell me, you know, how some of the elements in this, you know, collection kind of represent the pieces that you're pulling together. I can see the vintage. But what are some of the other dimensions? Yeah. Um, well, you know, for, for the, uh, the brand and the sort of storytelling in general, we always look a little bit sort of man versus nature, you know, mm. uh, where are we on the planet and how we can identify, you know, with our global surroundings. So this particular collection, the one that's in shops now, was looking at American identities and, um, you know, sort of American iconography, uh, which I think is very, you know, the Wild West. You're looking at the savagery of just the wilderness, you know, I mean, right now I'm up in the mountains uh, in the Sierra Nevadas and you just sort of are fascinated by the you know, the greatness of the country. And I wanted to celebrate that and, and look at the sort of idealism that was the foundation of this country and repurpose that for today in a celebration of, of yeah, our planet and the American landscape. Spencer, I mean, you, you should start a John Muir line. <laughs> well, we've actually, we've done a partnership with uh, Smokey Bear. Oh, that's cool. Um <laughs> We're, so I'm interested because you, know, you, you, I love what you're doing and I love this creative and I hate to kind of spoil it by mentioning government and policy. But is there anything that this town ought to be hearing from you in terms of how this place thinks about sustainability from your perspective? What would you you know, if I had Joe Biden sitting next to me or Joe Manchin or, you know, Kevin McCarthy, um, what would you share with them about? this nexus between people, what they wear, fashion, the private sector, and getting some of these choices right? Um, you know, I think that it, a lot of it is, you know, the, the complicated thing with sustainability and, and, you know, like the private sector in general is that it is, it's private, you know, gar garment production is, right. the fashion industry is like one of the most secretive industries out there. Hmm. So I think that, you know, re like sort of breaking that all down and having almost like an open sharing sort of source where people can help each other out. Just, you know, I mean, the future and the climate crisis, crisis is kind of like everyone's problem. So I, I think it's important for us to yeah, kind of band together. And that's on a, on a private sector level. That's on a customer level. I think there's a lot of re-education re that needs to happen, you mm. know, for people, you know, that want to shop. It's like they need to learn to buy better, to ask the right questions, to not be afraid to say no to stuff also, which, you know, does suck, but it happens. As soon as we're done with this, I'm going to get on your website. Is business booming? Yeah, you know, we've had a pretty good year so far. That's like they say in, you know, when I was in, growing up in Japan and you say, how's business in Osaka? And they say mama, which meant so-so, but it was going great. <laughs> <laughs> well, Spencer Phipps, founder of Phipps, thank you so much for sharing um, what you're doing in sustainable fashion. We're very grateful. This is a great way for me to kind of almost end the day. We've got one more interview with this three-day summit, and I really appreciate your perspective. Cool. Thank you so much for having me.